What's up coffee enthusiasts, Josh here, and welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Optiono Legom P64. I have two of these grinders with me, as each one has a different burr set in it that you can get as default in the P64 when ordering one. So of course there will be a discussion and a taste comparison for espresso and filter on both of these burr sets coming up. And whilst I have your attention, I do wanna bring light to, and I don't say this very lightly, the Legom P64 is a work of art, both in terms of the design aesthetic and its functionality. And trust me when I say, it's not just a coffee grinder, it is a piece of coffee art. And I personally can't help but admire the sheer beauty of this machine. And that's not even the best part. Straight out of the box, it operates smoothly and quietly. And from every review that I've read and the feedback I keep getting from owners is there is no buyers or get but I also do know what you've been thinking, as I was thinking it myself. It is very intimidating to be investing in a grinder at this price point, especially when you don't get to use the grinder first. Well, stick around, because in this review, I'm gonna help you decide whether it's worth that premium price tag. So let's not waste any more time. Hit that subscribe button and join me as we unravel the Legom P64 grinder. You don't wanna miss this one. First, let's talk about the minimalist design. And the Legom P64 is a sight to behold. Now, the whole grinder, from the moment you pick it up, screams premium materials and craftsmanship. And it is made from CNC machined anodized aluminium, and there are two premium color options. You also won't find any plastic on inspection or during operation of this grinder, as well as there are certain features missing from the P64 that are commonly found on other great grinders. I'm talking about a bellows for the hopper, as well as a grinds catch tray. Though by clever design, the P64 eliminates the need for such features. Up top, you have a 40 gram capacity to the hopper. It's a clean and reliable design with that rare bean that might get stuck occasionally, along with the removable anti-popcorn screen as well as if you ever feel like there is some retention in the grinder, a short sharp tap with the hand to the top of the hopper should easily remove everything from the grinds chamber. The hopper, this seconds as the grind size adjuster and is super smooth to turn. Adjust it while there are no beans in the hopper or else turn the grinder on while changing the grind. The adjustment, this stops on zero and does one full rotation of the dial past nine. And the adjustment is completely stepless along the way. And since tilted, it's really easy to see your adjustments. Each notch on the grind dial represents 0.01 of a millimeter or 10 microns of vertical burr movement. So precision on grind sizes is well guaranteed. Moving down to the forks, here you can grind out using a porter filter along with the included dosing ring for cleanliness. And there are nice high edges to the dosing ring which also help when using the included WDT tool. Otherwise, you can use the grinds catch cup. This now comes standard as the Legom Magnetic Versa cup. And there is a 40 gram capacity to this. And the way in which you use it is by removing that top part out of it, which is attached by magnets, to release the grounds from the bottom into your portafilter or brewer. Now, I have heard both sides of the coins when talking about this catch cup. I'm all for the design, but I'm not completely sold on its use when I'm dosing into a portafilter, because I still feel like the sides to this is quite high and I'm gonna be using a dosing ring whilst I'm still WDTing. So honestly, when kind of using this tool or stacking the tool, I'm not too sure about stacking or switching between the tools in this workflow. It seems a little bit tedious. However, it is my preferred tool for dosing into filter coffee as you can drop the grounds directly into the brewer without then lying those grounds up onto the side of the filter paper. The last aspects of design include an easy on and off button found on the side of the grinder, as well as an adjustable dial for changing the RPM that the grinding burrs spin at, ranging from 300 RPM to 1400 RPM. This is a game changing feature on this grinder and one we'll discuss in length in a second. And lastly, there is also a removable power cable at the back, which is great if you're just wanting to remove this grinder from the bench for maintenance without carting a cable around with you as well. 
And let's now take a look at the Burr sets. As mentioned, the current available options with the P64 are the SSP Red Speed High Uniformity Burrs. These are exceptional at espresso brewing, where they maximize texture whilst highlighting the best aspects of a traditional espresso shot. Used for all types and levels of roast, they are one of the best burr sets you can get for espresso brewing, though they wouldn't be my first pick for filter coffee. The Option O's Meisen Burrs, these resembling something of the lab sweet design, are better suited for medium to lighter roasts, highlighting a balance of clarity, sweetness, and mouthfeel. Somewhat the best of both worlds, ruler of none, they work reliably well across filter and espresso brewing. Now being 64 millimeter burrs, there's a half dozen or more options of burrs that are compatible with the P64. But those two options I just gave you still gives you plenty to think about and I think covers off a lot of ground without making that choice exhaustive when you go to purchase the P64 with several more options. When you can just purchase an alternative set of burrs down the line separately. Taking a look at the motor on the P64, it is commercial grade and it is a 300 watt brushless DC motor. It's gotta be one of the quietest yet equally powerful motors that I've come across in a home grinder. And there seems to be what's like a nice ramp up to full RPM without the grinder talking or twisting on the base as you turn it on. So let's now discuss adjustable RPM. As I mentioned earlier, this adds another layer of control and personalization to your coffee grinding experience. And what's important to note here is that grinding at 1400 RPMs and then brewing is not the same as grinding at three or 400 RPMs and brewing. The coffee from these different RPM settings will have distinct flavors. And this is especially noticeable in espresso brewing where the shots may vary wildly even if the grind remains unchanged. Now in simpler terms, once you've fine-tuned your coffee to the right grind size and a good recipe, you can then influence the extraction and the flavor of your coffee simply by adjusting the RPM dial. And this allows you to experiment with the coffee's taste without starting from scratch. Sounds pretty good. I do not particularly want to wax on about the effects of RPM in this video, though I will add that my preferred setting is a sweet spot for my liking around 900 to 1200 RPM for my espresso brewing. And on that note, as RPM will also affect the speed of grinding, let's grind out a 20 gram dose on an espresso setting on each burr set and see how long these grinders take and how loud they are. We'll start with the Red Speed High Uniformity Burrs. It's so quiet. It's ridiculous. It's not fair. The Meisenberg. Interesting, it's a slightly different noise. Equally as quiet though. But I suspect, I don't know, what's the clock saying? It's a little bit slower on the Meisenberg. There we go. Same grind setting. Let's take a look at these a little closer.
Now, the P64 is without question an all-purpose, all-brewing methods grinder. So let's now take a look at examples of settings across both of these burr sets. Now, the Lagon P64 grinder comes with a thoughtful array of accessories to enhance your coffee journey, and among them, there is a dosing ring and the catch cup, a dosing cup, an RTD spray bottle, and a WDT needle. Though it is worth noting that WDT tool could have used finer needles, and that's perhaps an ongoing improvement. Nonetheless, these accessories make a complete package for coffee enthusiasts. All right, espresso tasting time. I honestly have nothing to equally compare these grinders to as they're quite expensive grinders using some of the best burrs, and there are many great features to the P64, but having each of the burr sets available to the P64 with me right now, I think to myself, rather than running a blind tasting across the burr sets to the same recipe, I'll still use the same beans, but what I really want to do is attempt to dial in each individual burr set to what I perceive as the best shot from that burr set, and the coffee that I have, of course. And then I'm going to come back and talk to you about my discoveries, probably going to drink a lot of espresso, and perhaps this way I feel like you might have a little bit more access to what you can actually achieve with these burrs. What do you think? So, with a little bit of movie magic, just like that. You don't get to see me make a mess and I drink 12 espressos. Now, it was, the coffee was an Ethiopian. It was an heirloom variety as most Ethiopians are. It was washed uh, with tasting notes in retrospect. Uh, orange peel, nectarine, and toffee. Orange peel, nectarine, and toffee. It's definitely in here. I've got my little book here, um, breaking it down. So I kind of made six coffees on each burr set. And I basically attacked this one though, one burr set at a time. And I changed one thing at a time and I tried out known brew ratios and flow rates. Now, I started on a high RPM and then adjusted down to a low RPM to see how that also changed things. Patterns. Now, I did see some patterns. I definitely saw some patterns. And in particular, the SSP burrs ended up brewing the best shot as a ratio of a two to one turbo shot with higher RPMs. Whereas the Meisen burrs at its best shot was still a turbo shot, but it was a longer ratio of a 2.5 to one. So I brewed 50 grams out instead of 40 grams using that 20 gram dose. And that didn't change across all the coffees that I tried. The other main takeaways is I could grind finer with the SSP burrs. Or you could also say, I guess, that the Meisen burrs required a coarser grind setting for a similar flow rate. And when referring to low RPMs, I was using 500 RPMs as the example. And that didn't yield too much in terms of positive flavor attributes and seemed to really only mute a lot of the flavors that I was getting. So I didn't really see then the benefit to chase an even slower RPM whilst I was dialing in. Now the shots I did enjoy were all on an 1100 RPM setting and they shared between both burst sets, excuse me, a good balance of sweetness and acidity. Although the Meisen burrs did provide a better mouth feel overall through all the shots that I was tasting. But that also didn't translate to body, which I think for this coffee, it didn't end up having a lot of body anyway as well as any time I did chase body, I really ended up just over extracting the coffee on both burst sets. So that's, that's an important note to make. Now, increasing the RPM to 1400 from 1100 on both grinders, that didn't result in any positive attributes either. So my conclusions were with this particular coffee, the best from each burr set produced a very similar tasting espresso, though the SSP got there using a traditional brew ratio with a fast flow rate and the Meisen a longer ratio and an even faster flow rate. As well, the coffees to get to that good coffee, they did taste unlike each other between the burr sets and similar recipes. Now with the Meisen burr, I guess I had the better overall experience where there was more clarity, sweetness, and acidity, along with that mouthfeel, which I keep going back to. Whereas the SSP Burr set, it made a good coffee, of course, but it didn't, for me at least, highlight what I thought would be the best from this particular coffee and in drinking it black. 
So there were my conclusions. I could certainly keep grinding in and tasting some coffee, but I really started to see some sort of patterns there and I thought, all right, best to stop and share that with you now. I think it's time to just kind of clear up this mess and I'm gonna come back and we'll do a filter tasting. Bear with me. All right, we're back. 12 bowls in front of me. Not quite a mess just yet, but I'm sure it's going to be. I have a Rwandan natural anaerobic coffee here. It's a Bourbon. Flavor notes of red guava, goji berry, and rock melon. Again, just, I, this is one of those coffees I just love. It's so delicious and fruity. Uh, I haven't tasted any of these bowls just yet. I'm just gonna to explain to you what I'm going to do, and then we'll just come back and uh, we'll talk about the results. Basically, I have a grind size of five, seven, and nine across both of these burr sets, and also two different RPMs. Now, I've switched them all up, so this is not all the Meisenbergs, this is not all the SSPs. I have no idea what bowls these are on, but again, that's three different grind sizes, two different RPMs on each grinder, equaling 12 bowls. And look, it's so exhaustive. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to come back after I've tasted all these bowls, I'm gonna push the least favorite six bowls out of the question. So we're not even gonna come back and talk about them. I'm just gonna talk about and focus on the six top bowls and what I liked about them. And then we're going to just pop them all up and see what burr and RPM those top six bowls come from. I think will be the quickest and easiest way to get through this. Remembering this is also just a review on the grinder itself and not an exhaustive review of RPMs, burrs, flavors, blah, blah, blah. All right, That's a lot of coffee. Mm. Juicy, juicy flavors, good flavors. A lot of fidelity, a lot of cleanness, cleanliness. I love that word cleanness. A lot of cleanliness in these top bowls, just like super bright acidity and sweetness right up front. Uh, and, and that fidelity of those flavors coming through. It's a juicy cup of pour over or filter coffee right here. These just kind of not as intense, but still within this top six. Uh, I was able to screen off about four or five cups immediately through the 12 that just weren't doing anything. Uh, they, they weren't providing me any sort of uh, characteristics or, or aspects of a good coffee. So the bottom four were like really evident that they weren't great. Uh, and these top three, I'd say top four or five even, really noticeable how good they are. So I guess when you get into that middle part, oh, it's like sitting on the fence anyway. We're not gonna talk about the top, the bottom six. They are what they are in whatever order they are. This is not in any particular order, but I do wanna guess point to these top two, if anything else, because these two definitely rang out a little bit more so than these other four here. So it's the top six in a group, but it's these top two which really take the cake for me. Um, with that, I'll just make sure I can see my cheat sheet so I know what RPMs and colors and everything are going on between the burrs, because it's really confusing otherwise. Um, so blue, green. Blue on 350 RPMs, green on 1250, yellow on 350, red on... 1250, did I say, sorry, repeat, yes. Yellow on 350, red on 1250. Really confusing. So uh, top six, a grind size of nine to, to the low RPMs on a Meisenberg. A grind size of five, to the high RPMs, Meisenberg. A grind size of five to the low RPMs, Meisenberg. A grind size of nine to the high RPMs, Meisenberg. A grind size of seven to the low RPMs, Meisenberg. And a grind size of seven to the high RPMs, Meisenberg. So between a grind setting of, was there any fives? I can't remember. No, we're all seven and nines, weren't they? Yeah, there was, must have been a five. Yeah, there was a few fives. Um, 
all those lower end of the grind sizes. Uh, I think there was a mix of RPMs, but literally the top six were from the Meisenberg. And these are all the, uh, we got one, two, two grind settings, yeah. So these were all the, the bottom six were all the SSP. I mean, that's sold. If you're honestly ever going to be making filter coffee with your P64, I think this is pretty unanimous that in a random blind test like this across 12 bowls, the top six were Meisenberg. So if you're ever gonna, again, if you're ever gonna make filter coffee with your P64, you wanna have the Meisenberg. Now let's get into the real magic of the Legom P64 grinder. That's the pros and the cons. As if I haven't already spoken at length about the pros, there are plenty of reasons why this grinder is referred to as an end game grinder, as much as I dislike using that term. First and foremost, the consistency of the grind is something to behold. And the P64's 64 mm flat blurs deliver grounds that are so uniform, it's like a symphony of coffee particles, ensuring that every cup that you brew is nothing short of perfection. And here's where it gets exciting for you. When you pair the P64 with your favorite brewing method, whether it's espresso, pour over, aeropress, french press, or cold brewing, the results turn out to be remarkable and it takes your home barista game to a whole new level. Me personally, I've been able to consistently, and I think that's the key here, consistently extract flavors and nuances from the coffee beans that otherwise I would usually only be getting a glimpse of out of a full bag of coffee and a less superior grinder. And there have been plenty of true wow moments that I wish I could have caught on camera. But that's not all of it. Take into account the stepless grind adjustment, silent operation with minimal grounds retention. It makes for an incredibly user-friendly grinder. And if you're a coffee geek like me, that RPM control adds a further layer of customization that you won't find in many other grinders. And in essence, the Legon P64 grinder, as much as this sounds like a marketing term, it redefines your coffee experience with precision, consistency, and customization. One more noteworthy advantage of the Legon P64 is its user-friendly disassembling process. When it comes to cleaning or maintenance, this grinder does shine, and the ease at which you can take it apart for cleaning is remarkable. It's a practical feature that not only helps maintain the grinder's performance, but also saves you time and effort in keeping your coffee set up in top shape. And as you'll discover, there's very little you'll need to do to get into the burr chamber for a complete clean of this grinder. And then reassembling is just as quick. And more importantly, with the precision and the accuracy of manufacturing, the alignment on the P64 is permanent. So the grinder can be dismantled and then reassembled without you needing to worry about losing its alignment. Now, as with any product, there are some limitations to keep in mind. So let's talk about these cons. Firstly, it would be the obvious WDT tool. Having used a Normcore WDT tool where the needles are at 0.3 of a millimeter, using the one that comes along with the P64, the needles seem unnecessarily large. However, after a bit of use and understanding in context that WDTing can alleviate a poor grind distribution, I began to understand that that need for smaller needles isn't as pressing with the P64, and their WDT tool that's included does a great job at breaking larger clumps. Another misunderstanding is the RPM dial, where it moves from one to nine, and this mirrors the grind dial. But the obvious take on this is, surely there is a better way to represent moving from 300 RPM to 1400 RPM on a sliding scale? However, Optiono do give you a graph found in the manual, and this assists in adjusting the RPM to your desired speed. It's not straightforward, but essentially, once I had memorized certain waypoints between the minimum and the maximum RPM, I personally didn't feel like I needed to be any more precise in setting the RPM beyond this otherwise. And lastly, one further potential drawback is its price point. The Legon P64 grinder is an investment no matter which way you look at it. And while its performance justifies the cost for serious coffee enthusiasts, and certainly when unboxing the P64 and using it for the first time, my experience was I could clearly see, feel, and eventually taste where that money was going. It might not be the best fit for those on a tighter budget. But here's the thing, 
when you do consider the precision and the excellence that it brings to your coffee brewing, it's like having a coffee shop in your kitchen. I mean, not literally, you don't have a barista making your coffee and delivering it to you, but you get what I'm saying. In the grand scheme of things, the cost aligns with the incredible value that you're getting. It is a top tier choice for coffee lovers. And while there is that higher upfront cost, the benefits with longevity and the quality that it delivers makes a wise investment on a coffee journey. And that just about wraps it up. Thank you so much for joining me today as we explore the world of the Optiono Legon P64 grinder. In summary, I still want to address that question that may be on your mind. And with a vast array of coffee equipment at my disposal and my commitment to curating a coffee setup that brews excellence daily, I can't help but ask myself whether the investment in the Legon P64 grinder is a wise one. And the truth is, there are indeed many other great grinders out there for cheaper than this. However, it's not a badge or a brand that dictates this price. What truly sets the Legon P64 apart is its incredible craftsmanship that has gone into its creation. And it's that daily reliable experience of using this grinder day in and day out that sets it apart. It's not just a tool, it is that companion on your coffee journey. And the assurance that every morning your coffee will be nothing short of spectacular. That's the value of the Legon P64. And that's why I've been excited to share it with you today. So if you've enjoyed this review and found it helpful, please don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment. I'd love to hear about your experiences with this grinder or any questions you might have. And until next time, happy brewing, and we'll see you in the next video.